Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Chad Sports Talk. You don't know my name, Chad. Take a dive on sports. And welcome to the, my Week 12 NFL Pick and Preview video. We go over uh, this week's uh, actions of, of family festive stomach stuffing adventures and, and games covering from the three games we'll have on Thanksgiving all the way to Monday night. Kind of go over how I did last week. And just see if I can, can try to improve my current predicament. But before I dive in all all that stuffing and, and, and cranberry sauce, you could go ahead and give me a thumbs up, especially like the content provides you. Really pleases you too, guy. Really help promote this channel out. You also subscribe. Love you guys view my work, and I love you all for doing that. Now, me subscribe does cost you a dime. And well, lets me provide more attempt value for you. Now, last week, I went horrible. I went horrible. Six and eight. Um, Ryan Parr was one of my worst weeks, um, which was week three when I went seven to nine. So, percentage-wise, yeah. Not good, man. Um, but a lot of my losses came down to the final play anyway. So, in hindsight, I don't feel too bad. So... I'll try to see if we get back on the positive side of these games, and we'll see if the the uh, uh, Thanksgiving staple of games in Dallas and Detroit will help uh, satisfy my appetite, and then have you know the dessert game on uh, Thursday night as well for you know those like pumpkin pie or pecan pie or apple pie. You can enjoy it and watch these guys go at it. So let's just go ahead and kick off with the Bills playing the Lions as the Bills play for second straight week in Detroit. Uh, Buffalo looked kind of shaky against Cleveland. Um, Cleveland's just a very stout uh, uh, opponent, but can't seem quite to get over the mark. Excuse me, Cleveland's one of those. Yeah, one of those. Uh, the Lions are not... Going to be a pushover. Uh, you saw what they did with the Giants last week. They just decimated them. The Lions will run the ball. They have two running backs that will run the ball. Buffalo doesn't have a stout enough front line to really stop the run. So Vaughn Miller would be more there to kind of stop uh, the running backs for getting too, minute, too, minute, too much yardage. Which should allow Jared Goff more opportunity to be able to use maybe some play action or other aspects to kind of spread a rock around. But you also take it on Josh Allen, <laughs> who is like a linebacker disguised as a quarterback that could run like a fullback. Um, he is definitely one of these guys that you. you the Lions will have a hard time trying to contain, trying to come up with ways to uh, unlimit his uh, abilities to get to Stephon Diggs, who's already had a thousand yards in the season. And I just don't think it's going to be an easy task for the Lions to do. Right now, Buffalo's fair by nine and a half. No, no, that's that's a complete disgrace to Detroit. What they're doing right now. Detroit will make this a game. And it's going to be an ugly score. It's probably be like a five-point victory. Like I said, it's going to be one of those ugly games, but I think Buffalo will end up winning there in the Motor City. The other Thanksgiving staple. We head down to the Big D, where the Cowboys play host of the Giants. That key NFC East clash between both 7-3 squads. The Giants are coming off of their embarrassing loss to Detroit, while Dallas when Minnesota and embarrassed the Vikings. So both these teams are going opposite directions in the wrong type of uh, point in the season. It looks like the Cowboys defense got their swagger back, um, especially after you know nullifying the three-headed monster of the Vikings. They have to do the same thing again with uh, Saquon Barkley. Um, Daniel Jones is no slouch either, a quarterback, but he won't have time. You know, things going to be another one right now. Dallas favored about nine and a half. I don't think it'll be that much. Um, I think the Giants will be able to find ways to kind of revitalize themselves, uh, get back their swagger they had that they lost. I think it's going to be. It's, I still believe the Cowboys are going to win this one. Uh, I don't see if the Cowboys continue to run with the two-headed threat they have with Zeke and Pollard. 
the Giants can't stop him because then Dak could then just be able to uh, throw the rock to C.D. Lamb or, or even Pollard out of the backfield like he did last week. So I think this is going to be another uh, Dallas win, but I think it will at least be by seven. I don't see it being a nine and a half with three. And then after you stuffed your your face with all that Thanksgiving meal with friends and family, you sit in front of TV on Thursday night to watch the Patriots go into town take on the Vikings. And the Vikings got a wake-up call last week as Dallas went in there and just spanked them. That's uh, it, it, that's just it's like you know they were taking on Mike Tyson in his earlier part of his career when he was just doing two punches and that was it. That's that's how Minnesota was. And it was like, oh look, it's Mike, and they're out. <laughs> or you know, SCS school, you know, Austin P taking on Alabama. <laughs> A no chance, and. Minnesota's looking for revenge. New England against the Jets played horribly. Um, the defense was stout. But it also helps that you know Zach Wilson wasn't really throwing the rock very well for the Jets, which kind of let them win. But Minnesota's looking for blood. And the Patriots are on the chopping block. So right now, right now Minnesota's favored by two and a half. I think Minnesota will... Uh, blow this game open. I think a part be by a 10 point victory. I think Minnesota is looking to decimate someone. And New England is just one of those teams that just happens to be in the way. Head over to Cleveland where the Browns will play host to the Buccaneers. And this one I'm kind of going I went back and forth on on, on this particular game because Cleveland has shown some signs of they can be a a decent Decent team. I mean, look, they, they hanged with uh, Buffalo for a bit. Brissett is no pushover. Uh, Chubb in the backfield is pretty good. You still got Mari Cooper. They can still make some amazing catches. The defense still has Miles Garrett. Decent defensive squad. And a Tampa Bay team that's just kind of beat up, banged up, but has Tom Brady. An easy time for uh, Tom Brady to find his receivers to be able to. Uh, pick apart Cleveland and I did go back and forth because I look at this Cleveland team and I was like they possibly could do this I think they can right now Tampa Bay's favored by three and a half it's definitely gonna be less than that um I think it's gonna be just just weird play where they probably someone's gonna win by one because it's gonna be a missed extra point <laughs> but I'll take Tampa Bay Edging the Browns in a close matchup. Then we got the Bengals heading down to Nashville to take on the Titans. And this looks like two uh, teams are bound for a playoff. So this should be a, a very interesting uh, matchup. The Titans right now are just humming along. That defense last week was spectacular. How they were able to uh, uh, handle Green Bay and be able to disrupt Aaron Rodgers. It's the same thing they're going to do against uh, Cincinnati. Um, you know, Cincinnati's going to find ways to get things going uh, with uh, T. Higgins kind of in place for uh, Jamar Chase. Um, you still have uh, Mixon in the backfield. Right now, Cincinnati's favored by a point and a half. I'm taking the Titans at home. Um, this is just something about this team. I think the defense is, is just overlooked uh, by the league. And they're they're looking to to uh, solidify their their hold on the South, and this is one of these games that's going to help them solidify that hold. I think it will be a close matchup. I think it'll be probably a three point affair, but I will take the Titans. Then we head down to South Beach where the uh, Dolphins play host to the Texans, and Pierce may provide some spark for the Texans down to Miami. But beyond that, I think it's just going to be too much Tua Tagovailoa uh, and Waddle and Hill. That it's going to be too much for the Texas to handle. Miami is right now favored by 13. I'm inclined to agree. I think it will be a really lopsided game. Because like said, you look what Houston did against my, uh, uh, against Washington, and then I, I thought he was going to win that one game, and Washington just came in there and dominated him. So. 
Houston's going to look to try to improve from that aspect and try to, you know, get back some type of uh, dignity back to their uh, uh, their game. But you got to take on uh, Tua and the Dolphins, and it's going to be a fin attack as the Dolphins will roll. They have to New York, where now the Jets will play host to the Bears. Right now, that Jets offense is in disarray. Zach Wilson made a lot of critical passing errors in that game against the Patriots. He overshot, undershot, uh, totally missed open receivers. Open receivers. And he couldn't uh, complete the pass. He took no responsibility for his play. Um, he had kind of like a, a, a nonchalant type of approach. Now that is not going to sit well. So, there's a possibility that Zach Wilson gets benched this week in favor of Joe Flacco, the old staple, who actually did a quite decent job when Zach was out for injury. Flacco was a decent quarterback and led that offense. The team was different then. Uh, they don't have much of a running attack. Now, the Jets' defense is one of the best in the league. Now, you got to take on Justin Fields and the Bears. And Fields is, once again, they're finding ways to make him a more of a dual threat quarterback where, okay, is he going to pass? Is he going to throw? He's fine. Komet and Mooney as uh, his top receivers. And I, right now the Jets are by four and a half. I think that's because of the defense alone and the ineptness of the Bears. But you've seen the Bears kind of play games, and a lot of times they're, they're very good, very close. Last week in Atlanta, there was a late pick that sealed sealed the victory for the Falcons. Um, the Lions, they coughed up the lead there late. So the defense is failing at the end of the games. I'm probably going to be crazy. But I'm going to take Chicago edging out New York. Um, I think it's going to be one of these weird games on, on the docket. This could go be completely the opposite direction. The Jets could just blow them out of the water. But I'm thinking that the disarray right now in the offense may lead to more problems that probably get exposed for that team. I think the Bears are opportunistic enough to pick part the the uh, the areas that they have to. And I think Chicago will squeak out a two-point victory against the Jets. Then we head into Washington where the Falcons come to how to take on the commanders in both these teams similar records one's above one's below the 500 mark because you know the five and six six and five both teams actually decent enough that could actually win the game um, Atlanta seems partially have more wins than they really should their defense held on no refs to make a very terrible calls in certain games because I think uh, Atlanta could definitely be you know Seven and four, eight and three. Uh, the commanders, I think, right now are kind of out of hand, but they could be like a seven, seven and four squad themselves. So both these these teams are decent enough. I think they're just missing the key pieces here and there. Uh, for the Falcons, losing Pitts for the season, it's going to hurt. In Washington, um, Chase Young could actually be starting this week, or at least be able. He he's been activated. May not be playing this week, so there's a possibility that he can actually come and start playing once again, which would be a huge factor for that defense. Um, that team has, like I said, an identity a couple weeks ago. You look at back at the, that Eagle, that Monday night game against the Eagles, where they found their identity, they 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 found their purpose. They were united for a cause. They were behind uh, Heineke. That uh, they're behind Rivera, despite all the distractions outside it of the field of play with the organization and the city and the district. This team is looking to find a way to move forward. Atlanta's next on the docket. And uh, fortunately for Mariota, not having one of his key pieces on that offense, the Falcons going to have a, a hard day to stay uh, uh, with the commanders. I think Washington's been able to beat them right now. Washington's favored by four and a half. Yeah, things will be powered by a six-point victory. Then we head down to Charlotte, where you have the Panthers playing host to the Broncos in a very lackluster game between the two. Uh, both these teams performing well below their standards. 
Denver is supposed to be a lot better than what it's supposed to be. Uh, the record should be reversed, I think. I had a lot of high hopes for Denver going into the season because I had probably a little more faith in Russell Wilson than I probably should have. Um, because he hasn't shown it, that the offense for Denver has just been kind of flat. Uh, they'll show uh, bits and pieces here and there that, A, this is this is why we paid him half a billion dollars to sign him to a long-term deal. And then they have that one great drive and then nothing after that. They, the uh, defense for Denver, decent squad, uh, kind of missing some of their, their teeth they, they once had. Uh, Carolina team that uh, uh, is also going through some major changes, you know, getting rid of uh, players and coaches, kind of uh, uh, outperforming, uh, uh, playing above their weight class per se, and trying to uh, be relevant enough. It's like seeing, you know, if you watch like you know WWE and you have you know Bray Mysterio take on Braun Strowman or Mustafa Ali taking on uh, uh, Bobby Lashley, small dude. Big dude. Doesn't work well <laughs> for the small dude, and that's what Carolina is right now. He, they're, they're, they're the little guy that could. But I know it's just something about this game. I think Denver should put up some points. I really do. But I think after a while, the Carolina defense will shut them down. It is up to the Carolina to find ways to make things work with DJ Moore and Foreman as their two main stars with Baker Mayfield to find ways. Baker went inept against. Baltimore, which he always did anyways when I mean, he was in Cleveland. I'm taking Carolina at home, and I think that's the reason why I'm taking Carolina because they're at home. Uh, if they're up at Denver, I'll probably take the Broncos. It, it's, um, like I said, I think Denver will end up probably leading early and then just go flat, and that's when Carolina's going to come back and win. It's going to be a comeback victory. Right now, Denver's on favor by two and a half anyways, so it's not a huge stretch to pick Carolina. But I think it's going to be Carolina winning part by like three. Then we head down to Jacksonville where the Jaguars play host to the Ravens. Um, the previous mentioned Ravens who kind of underperformed against Carolina and, and wait to the uh, last quarter of the game to finally score a touchdown. So that gives more credit for the Carolina's defense than anything else. Jacksonville is just one of these teams that seems to find ways to get themselves close to games and just can't quite go over that mark. And the game against the Giants, they should have won. I mean, there's there are so many games on the docket that they were just like one play away, and that was it. I think they are going the right direction. I think, to me, there's a lot of weapons right there on the Jags that not many people realize. Trevor Lawrence is a decent quarterback. I don't think he is the the stud he was claiming out to be when he came out of Clemson. He had that one great year in Clemson, and then he just kind of started to tailor off. Everyone's saying Justin Fields better than Trevor Lawrence. I didn't believe anyone in their hype because they're a product of the system. They have to find the right coach in the pros that will help, help them develop to be a pro quarterback. Trevor Lawrence has the better coach. And Doug Peterson, I mean, look what he did when he had uh, Carson Wentz. So he'll take the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Of course, Carson Wentz was injured. Then, you know, it fell to the backup. You know, Nick Foles and, and his return Carol, uh, uh, Philly and ended up winning the Super Bowl. But, again, off point here. The Jags have uh, Antonin as well, another versatile running back. Uh, Kirk, uh, top receiver for the Jags. Uh, their defense, no laughing uh, matter either. They will probably be able to uh, disrupt Lamar Jackson in the backfield because Lamar, once again, he's like the only focal point for that team. I mean, as much as he loves to throw his tight ends, it's just something about this team is not quite there. Now, the Ravens defense has gotten a little bit better. I mean, you know, you know adding Rokon Smith from the Bears really helps out. So, He's going to be a huge factor to determine how the Jaguars kind of play. And I think if you take away the running game, Trevor Lawrence can be good enough to find open receivers. And this is going to be a very, very good day. Very, very good game. And Baltimore right now is favored by four. I'm taking Jacksville at home. I'm going to take the Jacks for an upset. I, I, it's just one of these games I think that, uh, we need weird games that Jacksville can actually win. Um, 
kind of keep some teams humble, and I think it's just, that's just going to be it's just the Jazz going to find a way to keep Baltimore humble and sneak out a victory. And we have to the desert where the Cardinals playing host of the Chargers, and the Cardinals uh, season just keeps getting worse. <laughs> They're firing uh, one of their uh, O-line coach after the game Mexico City because apparently he got a little touchy-feely with uh, 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 some women. So the Cardinals went, okay, we don't need you. Goodbye. bye I'm playing host of the Chargers. This is a team that I thought could have beat the Chiefs last week and could have if Herbert didn't throw an interception or didn't get picked, you know, bounced around and picked off. So they are a very talented uh, team. Um going to be way too much for Arizona. J.J. Watt's going to try to do stuff, but it's uh, going to be not much there. Khalil Max will be a focal point for that Chargers defense. Right now, Chargers for a favor about four and a half. And it's going to be Chargers all day long, um, knocking off the Cardinals and pretty much ending their season. Then we got that A that's heading up to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. Battle of Geno Smith's resurrected career and Derek Carr's career that right now seems to be flatlining a bit. Having Devontae Adams for the Raiders really helps them out, as well as Jacobs. Seattle's offense is no laughing matter. We have uh, Lockett and Metcalf as receivers. You also got uh, Walker right now as your primary running back. The defenses are about the same. So this is going to be a good matchup between these two, I really think. Uh, right now, Seattle's for about three and a half, but I think. Seattle's chemistry right now is more attuned than the Raiders' chemistry. Because, you you, you know, they, they win the Denver, won an overtime, great emotional win. That's what they needed. Can they take that same energy they did in Denver and bring it to Seattle, or do they lose it at the high altitude? I have a feeling they're going to lose it in the high altitude because I think Seattle's going to be too much for them right now. It's three and a half by Seattle. It's going to be at least a three-point victory. But I do see the Seahawks winning this game. Then the Rams will go take on the Chiefs at, at Arrowhead. And like I said, this Rams defense should be a lot better than they are. Should be a lot better than they are. Can they contain Mahomes or Pacquiao or, you know, contain those two I think they will get to Mahomes they will it's just I think the rate uh, the Rams front line is good enough to get to Patrick Mahomes they will get sacks but the Chiefs uh, are savvy enough to come up with game plans to kind of negate uh, Aaron Donald getting back there and I think the Chiefs will end up uh, uh doing just enough to beat the Rams. Right now, they're favored by 14 and a half. I doubt it would be that much. I really do. Because just the fact I think the Rams are trying to establish themselves once again with their defense. The offense is going to make the turnover the ball part too many times, uh, which will allow the Chiefs to kind of get some good field position, get the points on the board. And it's going to be closer to 14, probably closer to like a 10-point victory. I think it's going to be more field goals and touchdowns for the Chiefs. But it's because they have more opportunities to make those uh, uh, points, but the Chiefs winning at home. Back to Santa Clara, where the 49ers play host to the Saints. Now, the Saints, who uh, took care of Bezos against the Rams last week, take on a 49ers team that has just revitalized itself. And Andy Dalton will be having more interceptions than touchdowns this week. We don't think it's a far, uh, too far of a comparison for that one. Alvin uh, Kamara's not going to have a very easy game either. The Saints or the 49ers just have too many weapons on that offense to try to uh, pinpoint who to take out, and Jimmy G should have enough opportunities to uh, throw about three touchdowns to about one interception, and it's the 49ers should in the win this one kind of easily. Right now they're favored by nine and a half. I say it's at least a seven point victory, but Niners definitely winning this one, keeping pace with the Seahawks. Sunday night, we head back to Philadelphia where the Eagles will play host to the Packers. Um, that game last Thursday with the Titans, uh, Aaron Rodgers was off his game, completely off his game. Uh, the Eagles had to get a slugfest with the Colts, but ended up coming back from behind to uh, beat uh, the Colts in Indy. Everything's pointing towards Philadelphia, some point victory. You know, right now, they're, they're uh, uh, favored by seven. 
I think things could get a little bit uh, 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 better for them in, in this aspect. I think they'll probably put more points. Uh, Philadelphia has uh, shown to uh, allow teams to kind of hang around the game a bit. But I think Philadelphia will end up edging out Green Bay probably by three points and just probably solidifying their position as part of the number one team in the NFC. And then Monday, 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 uh, the Colts will play a host to the Steelers in a, a, a matchup between these two teams that are just underperforming. I had more aspirations for Indianapolis, I think, for any other team. Actually, I have a host for Pittsburgh, too. So, <laughs> but I thought the Colts were going to win the uh, South with Matt Ryan at, at the helm, you know, the running game going, being the focal point. Saturday has got these guys thinking they can win. They win his first game. They were close to being Philadelphia last week. And as as I hear the fighting Saturdays are he, he's kind of going the right direction. Now Tomlin, no nonsense coach. He's been there for a long time in Pittsburgh. Never had a losing season. So they were motivated to try to do that. You saw uh, Sparks last week as well against Cincinnati, and they were playing right there uh, uh, blow for blow with the Bengals, and it came up short. Matt Ryan likes to throw interceptions. Which running back's going to be better? Is it going to be Najee Harris or Jonathan Taylor? Which line's going to hold up? It's going to be a very fun game between these two. Right now, Indy's favored by two and a half. And I think that could be a possibility, but I think Pittsburgh will go into Indianapolis and sneak out a victory. Be able to sneak out that uh, three-point win against the, uh, the Fighting Saturdays. I mean, nothing against you know the Colts. I think the Colts' mentality right now, team chemistry, is right there with them. They're going to get some of these nail-biting games, and there's going to be another one. I think it's another team from Pennsylvania, but I will take the Steelers. Well, there you go. Those are my picks. Um, I pretty much went down the line with a lot of the favorites. A lot of these games, I think, is going to be one, one-sided one for a lot of them. There's going to be a couple of close ones that they're going to limit a few. Well, let's just say if I can do better than my six and eight from last week. Maybe I get back to my nine wins. Yeah, that'd be nice. So this is a full slate of teams playing. No one's off for this uh, holiday weekend. And we'll see what transpires afterwards. But, hey. Let me know down below what you think of my picks, uh, which game you look forward to the most. Um, do you watch football during Thanksgiving? Uh, I know a lot of families are like, nope, <laughs> no sports. Because <laughs> I always he- hear you guys yelling on the TV. <laughs> my wife tried to do that to me quite a few years, and, and half the time didn't work. <laughs> well, anyways, just let me know. Um, I want you down there making those comments and let me know your, your, your favorite your game you look forward to this week. Um, you can also hit that thumbs up once again. You can also share this video with friends and family. It helps promote the channel out. Once you subscribe, make sure you click that bell and turn on your notifications. Let you know the next time I post any more content on my channel. And I will see you next time on Chat Sports Talk.